Hey everyone, and welcome to Cozying Up with a Clear Cut, where we get up close and personal with women that inspire us. Today we're here with Chanel Tyler, a clear cut couple, and also the director of consumer engagement at S.A. Lauder Companies, and woman of many hustles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, Chanel. Thank you for having me. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you do day to day and also all of your side hustles because I know that you have I can't even count on one hand I follow her on Instagram and I literally don't know <laughs> how she has the amount of time like there we had there are only so many hours in the day and she just takes advantage of every single minute so I just want to know how do you do that and a full-time job and how did you even get into skincare and beauty and female empowerment and all of the things that you do oh my goodness <laughs> so first of all you're being super super generous um I I Got into my current job at Estee Lauder Companies um, post B-School. So I went to Columbia Business School to focus on luxury marketing, and I really thought I wanted to go into fashion. And that's where we met. Yes, so that is where we met. Chanel went to business school with my husband, Kyle, and we met, I think, at like a gala or something. It was. It was like the senior graduation ga yeah. senior. The graduation <laughs> gala, gala yeah, for the yeah. second year. Yeah. And we were like drunk talking about engagement rings. Yeah. <laughs> and that was when Kyle was like... Yeah, so if you th if you think you're gonna be getting engaged soon, let me know. And I was like, well, actually. <laughs> and then I think Sheldon bought the the ring for you all like a few weeks later. later like, it yes. literally happened yeah. that fast. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm very grateful to this day. Um. So yeah. So I started at the Estee Lauder Companies post graduation. I was a part of their like rotational management program, which they call the Presidential. Uh, management associate program and you spend two years really learning about the business and rotating through different brands and different functions and ultimately that led me to my current role where I focus on uh, local and cultural relevancy for the North America region. So when you went to business school, did you always know that you wanted to get into like the beauty industry? Not at all. <laughs> um, it's completely like a passion that came out of nowhere. I never even thought about it. Never really had even had a strong connection to beauty or skincare. But literally, I kid you not, I used to listen to like friends who were like, oh my God, I just love my job. And like, I enjoy going up to work. It doesn't feel like work. And I'd be like, no way. Like, you've got to be lying. Like, I've never <laughs> felt that way before. What did and, you do before B-School? Um, I used to work in investment banking. Mm. So I worked at a couple of different um, very so didn't large have, firms. didn't have a passion oh, for that. Oh, no. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. It was, like, almost like a dread. Um, but once I kind of stepped foot in ELC's doors, it was like something just sparked. And I felt a Ooh, sort spark. of, like... We're going to talk about that. Yes. <laughs> I felt like a... Like, just an interest and a passion that I'd never felt before. Amazing. Yeah. So, what is, like, your day-to-day -day there now? So, it depends. Because I kind of work on a team that operates as a startup, um, every single day is different. So, my job description has literally already been changed four times in the four months <laughs> that I've been there. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well. So, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, uh, basically, what you can think of it as is multicultural marketing. I help our event brands be more relevant with consumers of color. Awesome. Yeah. And so how, I know a lot of people out there probably work a job that they may or may not love, but also may want to explore doing a side hustle, mm -hmm. but don't know if they have like the time or the energy or even if it's worth doing it. Yeah. So how, I know that you have a few side hustles, so tell me all <laughs> about those and how do you balance, you know, working full time and mm -hmm. doing that and how did you even get into your, you know side things yeah so it's it's definitely not easy I totally feel like they're not enough hours in the day um, <laughs> but it initially started from having a manager at ELC who asked me to put together a list of influencers um, that were women of color focused on skincare and I was like oh this will be easy I'll be able to do a quick pull and have this ready for in a couple of days I was only able to find like three or four. Oh, really? And it was really mind blowing because it meant that there was a total white space. Yeah. There, so she and kept... there are so many. I feel like be like makeup and skincare influencers. Makeup, makeup. not skincare, not skincare. Yes, makeup and hair care are like huge, mm -hmm. but the skincare space is just not something where you're seeing a lot of conversation, um, specifically with Black women. And I feel like that's an area where a lot of women like are always seeking out like advice oh or, my God. or like knowledge because I know that I don't know what kind of skincare routine I'm supposed to have, especially like as you go and you are going 
aging, That's like, have different... The age thing. Yeah. Right? So, I feel like my skin when I was in my 20s is, like, completely different. Like, I had a total adult acne freak out when I... It's the day I turned 30. And that was actually what started all of this, like, research and kind of knowledge sharing was, like, me trying to figure out how to get my skin back to a healthy state. Because mm-hmm. um, it just exploded one day. And I was putting on makeup to, like, cover it up. And it was just making it worse and yeah. worse and worse. And I was like, all right, this is not going to work. Because <laughs> I just, you know, it impacts your confidence. Totally. And how you feel about, you know, how people are perceiving you. And... That happened to me recently, like, earlier this year. I've always had, like, super good skin, like, never really did much. Just, like, wash my face and, like, kind of moisturize it Mm -hmm. and it was fine. Splash of water. Yeah. And then earlier this year, I started breaking out, like, a ton, like, on the side of my face. And I was like, what is happening? Like, and it, like, wouldn't go away. And I would be, like, drinking tons of water because it said that it was because, like, I was dehydrated (laughs) or, like, putting things on. I was, like, getting facials and it wouldn't go away for so long. And I was, like, looking for advice and actually following you <laughs> I got a ton of good advice and I was like I'm getting married like I can't have this, yes like, I remember acne. you telling yeah. me about that I was like help me <laughs> Chanel <laughs> and I feel like probably so many people yeah. are seeking that out and don't know where to go to get that type of advice yeah 100 mm-hmm. and the thing was like literally last October was when I started using my Instagram like platform to mm-hmm. start talking about skin concerns and benefits and products And I kid you not, the level of engagement that I received, the level of support that I received with women being like, oh my God, I've been struggling with like acne all my life and I finally have clear skin. Or, oh my God, I've had hyperpigmentation and never knew how to like clear it up. Like, I mean, it's just, it's been very rewarding. And it is, I wouldn't necessarily call that a side hustle, but it's just something I'm passionate about, helping other women be able to get to that level of like whatever healthy skin looks like for them. And how did you learn about skincare? Was it through your job or was it just on your own? So it started initially being on my own. When I had to, that my battle with adult acne, I did a lot, a lot of research to try to figure out how to treat it on my own. And then I also started going to a dermatologist and I asked her a gazillion questions because I wanted to really be able to understand if this happens again, how can I treat it? Because I really didn't want to be using like medical grade, farmer grade products because they're very harsh and I didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life Um, so that was how it started and then my job basically said they wanted me to focus on all of the skincare um, content best practices and really work on all of the strategies for the brands specifically focused on skincare and it just grew from there and so everything that I was kind of learning as it applied to like women of what really I don't want to say I focus on women of color but really women of all backgrounds like DM me, interact with me, um, because at the end of the day, skin is skin, Mm -hmm. right? Like we all have like a skin type. It doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with skin tone, Mm -hmm. but there are certain concerns that impact people of color a little bit more More. than Mm -hmm. other ethnicities. Totally. And I'll tell you that Chanel, I think like whatever she says on her Instagram, like everyone listens to. And that's (laughs) me. Also, I look at all your stories and everything. You're like, you got to buy this. You got to buy that. I feel like Literally, like, 50% or more of the people that follow her buy whatever she tells them, and it's, like, gospel, because you are, like... I'm betting it. Like, yeah. I, I'm not going to talk about it unless I know it works. I'm about to buy those, like, little pads or whatever. Oh, those the clean skin wipes? I'm, like, I got... Every time I wipe my face with the towel, I'm, like, she's telling me there's bacteria on this. Like, I got to get those things. Listen, those washcloths attract a lot of bacteria. <sighs> <laughs> and every time I look at my washcloth now, I'm like, this is gross. And I never thought about it before. I, literally, everyone has been telling me, like, they can't even touch their washcloth anymore because that's immediately what they think about. And I'm like, I mean, it's, it's, true. it's true. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you have that platform that you use for, like, your skincare, mm-hmm. giving advice. I know you give a lot of fashion advice, too. Yes. And you have a great style. You, so so you. I know that you just started a another Instagram platform for... <laughs> reselling your yeah. clothing items so tell me a little bit about that so I've always been into fashion which is why I initially thought I wanted to go into like retail when I came out of b-school um I just I just love it like it's just such a great way to kind of express your personality uh but what was happening was I had like bags and bins of clothes mm-hmm. at home and all of these things like I, I have 
personal relationships with like my shoes and my clothes and so <laughs> they hurt like this sentimental value and so yeah. I've just been holding it on holding on to it because I couldn't get rid of them and then finally I was like I've got to cut the cord like this is ridiculous and I take care of all my stuff I get everything dry cleaned um, I get things preserved I keep them in boxes and so I was just like I got some great stuff it's just sitting here people are always kind of commenting on my style mm -hmm. so let me just kind of test this out I had a few few people who follow me that said I'd love to come raid your closet or you should do like a closet sale and I thought it was a kind of like a bit of a ridiculous idea and I was like <laughs> well let's test it out and see and it was hugely successful oh I sold about 80% of the things that I posted oh um, my god it was incredible like it was really incredible and all of the women well, the majority of the women who actually received um, something that they purchased from me, they like love it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so I try to make sure I'm offering value to people, but also recognize the fact that this is like a quality item. So, and what made you start your own closet sale versus like reselling on, yeah, you know, like Poshmark? Yeah. Or, um, so Poshmark takes quite a significant cut. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like you're kind of doing a lot of work just for them to benefit. And you from have the it. audience that wants your stuff already, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it really was just like they matched up perfectly and there was a market market for it kind of like I was able to create that and then there were people who were who were interested just created the demand and supported it with the supply so are you gonna keep doing that does that mean you have to buy more stuff so or? <laughs> you'd be shocked I actually only posted about a quarter of my wardrobe oh my when God. I did the first sale and really it was only intended to be one sale mm -hmm. um, but because it did so well and because I didn't account for how much time it actually took to do all the posting because what I was trying to do was not only create the content and explain like my relationship with the item, how you could style it and everything. It was also about like Which taking photos. Which is a great photos. marketing tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, let me style it with like a skirt or put on a dress with like the booty so that people can understand all the different ways they could wear it. That's and I awesome. felt like that was gonna influence conversion ultimately. And it totally. did. Totally. Yeah. So you have more closet sales coming. I do. I'm posting new items weekly, and I've actually had a number of other women um, in my like girlfriend groups who also oh, have things that they're like, hey, can I sell through your platform? And one of the things I noticed was I have, I guess my feet are on the smaller side. I'm like a seven and a half, eight. And I had a lot of women saying like they, they, they wish that I had like nine and a half and tens. And so my other girlfriends were like, girl, I've got Fendi shoes and like Gucci pumps oh, and blah, 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 blah. Can you sell this stuff? And I'm like... You know, if it's in the right condition, absolutely. So it could potentially so be So where something. can people check out your closet sales? Um, so my Instagram handle is buymechanel underscore closet. Okay, perfect. Yes. So weekly sales now. Weekly sales. And so new there, items weekly. Is there a special day that they're going to be launched? Usually I don't have time to post until Sunday. Okay, so um, every Sunday. Every Sunday. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Don't hold me to it though, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Just check in from here and then. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Awesome. And so you have just your personal skincare mm -hmm. and you have your closet sales. And I know you're also a co-founder of Tribe, yes. right? So tell us a little bit about what that is because I think that's super cool. Yeah. So Tribe is basically a collective of black women who work in the beauty, fashion, and CPG spaces. And essentially what we do is we want to celebrate, connect, and support um, these women. So what we found was before Tribe started that there was these con black women, especially they are over indexing and how much they spend in all three of these ind industries, but under index from like a representation standpoint, whether mm -hmm. that be like campaigns and advertising and marketing, or whether that be executive leadership positions. So Tribe is kind of meant to kind of fill that space and to invite these women into a safe environment where they can talk about their concerns, talk about their challenges, but also be around women who are like-minded and want to be a part of the community with them. We also do different events with brands that are looking to engage black women specifically. Um, we work with different companies for hiring um, if they're looking to fill like a diversity position. And essentially, it just kind of started from with me and my other two co-founders are Crystal and Alexis. We all met at ELC. Um, so that's like another great thing that oh, came wow, out of the company. Oh, you just started it from Yeah, this right is started within like a year and a half ago. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Because I feel like I see like you doing so many things with the group. And, yeah. And I think that's so amazing because a lot of times you see that when you're in a professional space as a woman, I don't know about your mm -hmm. experience, but I haven't gotten the most support or encouragement or I've always wanted like a female mentor yeah. or like a group of women 
that like help lift each other up but I feel like it can be very competitive it can and maybe be. even more so for women of color because there's like one spot at the top that you're all fighting for yeah and we don't want to be fighting like yeah. it really should be like supportive and collaborative and that is essentially what we're trying to build is to be able to lift each other up and that's amazing because I feel like women in all industries especially like what I've noticed from startups mm -hmm. is that it's really male dominated. So when you're like a female founder, yeah. um, at least speaking from my experience, it can be like, okay, well, there's only like a certain amount of women that can get like specific funding or can do this or that. Or, and if you're not in like the sorority or like that little group, then you're kind of like an outcast and no one's going to like help you. So I've had probably most of my, most of, of my support has come from men and not women, which is like super sad. That really is. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm disappointed yeah. in us because yeah, of that. Yeah, me too. And so that's why I think, like, it's always good to, like... And that's why we want to do this podcast, yeah. right? To connect with women of, like, like-minded ambition, maybe mm -hmm. in different industries, and kind of, like, lift each other up and, like, um, you know, have people exposed to different platforms. Yeah, completely. I mean, I think it's... Tribe has really been amazing as it's come to life in so many different ways the mm -hmm. initial vision that we had for it versus where it is now it's like light light and day but it's still like so much to do and we're recognizing mm -hmm. that we have to keep kind of pushing the envelope on things but it's hard because this is a like our our baby but it has nothing to do with our full-time job yeah and yeah. where can people follow or yeah check out tribe tribe org nyc.com is our website so you have skincare, fashion, yeah. and female empowerment. So we always talk about the spark here. So your spark is like your motivation, your drive, your passion. Like what ignites your spark? And what is your spark? Or do you have just like a ton of different ones? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the, the one thing that comes to mind like immediately is when I get a DM back from someone who follows me who says, my skin has never looked this way. Mm -hmm. I have never felt as confident as I do. I went makeup free for the first time in my life. Those are the types of things that like ignite me and make me feel like I'm on a path to whatever it's going to kind of transcend into. I just feel like I'm going in the right direction. And I think with all the things that you do, there's an underlying um, theme of female confidence, right? Yes. Whether it's through your skin or through your fashion mm -hmm. or through, you know, your community or network of people. Yeah, it's like be your best self. Like yeah. I think that everybody should be, be able to be self. their best self. So that's your spark. Yeah. So we have our spark ring that we're going to gift you. Oh my God. And this is just a daily reminder of, you oh know. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. It's a daily reminder of, you know, your spark and what, you can look down on it every day and just remember like what ignites you and what, you know, is your passion and drive and never lose your spark. This is like insanely gorgeous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I totally was not expecting that. <laughs> so we like to go from spark to sparkle. Okay. Um, so I know you said that we always ask for a piece of jewelry that has some extra special meaning to you because we think jewelry has a ton of like mm -hmm. emotional value and sentimental value as well as being beautiful. And you said your engagement ring, which yes. is a clear cut ring. Yes, it was. <laughs> Honestly, before, so my husband, Sheldon, was has been trying to get me to wear jewelry for years. <laughs> um, he used to always kind of like get on me about like not having accessories when we first started dating. And I just wasn't He was into getting it. on you for not wearing accessories? Not wearing accessories. <laughs> I was like, seriously, man. <laughs> Um, but you know, I had to kind of lean into it. It just wasn't something I wasn't used to wearing things on my fingers. I barely wore, I wore the same like hoop earrings every single so day. So does Sheldon have just amazing style himself? Listen, <laughs> this man has impeccable style. It was actually one of the things that like attracted to me to him initially. Oh my God. That's awesome. Kyle yeah. could wear basketball shorts and like sleeveless shirts every day. And no, like, Kyle's so got, much. Kyle's got style. Oh. I've, I've seen the man. He's got style. I'm giving him a lot of credit. That's me. <laughs> So he got on you for not wearing enough accessories. Not wearing enough accessories. Uh huh. So this he's very like strategic in the way that he plans things. So a couple years before he proposed or even took me ring shopping, he started buying me rings. Mm -hmm. So actually, all of the rings that I have on my finger, with the exception of my wedding band, he bought. Mm -hmm. um, so all of my jewelry, 
uh, pretty much has come from from him. Mm -hmm. And it's been great because he was kind of like getting me used to the fact that I was going to have to wear, you know, a wedding band and an engagement (laughs) ring at some point. Um, So I couldn't have asked for like a more beautiful engagement ring. I mean, it's just... So Chanel has a gorgeous radiant cut diamond on a thin pave band in white gold. And she has a super cool wedding band which is our baguette east west eternity band which is a cool like little something unexpected yeah Yeah. i feel like it just kind of works together um you don't have to have them matching exactly you can have a little bit different yeah be a little different why not yeah (laughs) because i used to be really into like mixed media when i was and then this is kind of like a reminder they don't have to be exactly the same no i like when they're kind of different yeah it's a little contrast exactly and I know you said that you were interested in maybe canary diamonds. Yeah. So canary diamonds are a term that refer to fancy yellow diamonds. And fancy yellow diamonds are basically the diamond scale for white diamonds goes from D, which is completely colorless, and all the way down to Z, with every step down being having a little bit more yellow undertones. Mm-hmm. But once you pass Z, then it goes into the fancy yellow. Then the more color you have, then the more expensive it is. So. She knows everything, you all. <laughs> everything. I'm fascinated. So after Z, it goes light, then fancy light, then fancy yellow, then fancy intense yellow, then fancy vivid yellow. So we have <gasps> two oh, this fancy is a tease. yellow diamonds just to play with. Why not? Oh, my God. So we have like a radiant cut with side stones, fancy yellow. This is around three carats. Wow. And this is an, a fancy light yellow oval diamond um, around three and a half. Just to, just to try on and see for the next one, you know? Look at, listen, I am taking <laughs> that upgrade just so he knows when he listens. You just got married um, this summer, right? Yeah, July 19th. This is Congratulations. Stunning. And Thank this you. would be a perfect anniversary gift, right? <laughs> He's going to kill me. You're going to have to talk to him about that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is such an interesting style to me. It's a fancy yellow oval with um, trillion side stones. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, it is. Not the traditional engagement ring. The yellows are very different on these two. Mm -hmm. So this this one is a fancy light and this is a fancy yellow. So you can see there's more saturation in this one. So as you get more yellow, once you get to that side, then that's when it's more rare and more expensive. Whereas with the white, it's like the less color in it than the more desirable. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Awesome. Well... I am so happy that you were able to come by. This girl is literally like the modern day Beyonce. She has oh. just as many hours in the day as we do, but she does like <laughs> six different things. So stay Chanel, busy. <laughs> stay busy. Be the best version of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to follow Chanel, I am obsessed with following her. It's at Buy Me Chanel. And if you check out your closet sales every Sunday, at by me Chanel underscore closet sale closet it was closet sale we changed it to closet at by me Chanel <laughs> at by me Chanel underscore closet it's a mouthful perfect awesome and you can follow us at the clear cut and um, follow our YouTube page at the clear cut as well and tune in to next week and thank you so much for coming by thank you this was amazing yay